the beginning of October, and during the month of October, I will be looking at a bunch of dark, macabre, and horror titles. And I will start things off with a little bit of a confession. I love vampires. As monsters, as villains, and as characters, they are incredibly intriguing to me. Vampire folklore and mythology is absolutely fascinating. And I cannot stand modernized vampires. You know, the ones that instead of terrorizing small towns, drinking the blood of virgin maidens, and burning up in sunlight, they sparkle and go to high school and brood over teenaged girls. I'm much more into traditional vampires, and so today I'm going to talk about one of my favorite vampire franchises ever, Vampire Hunter D. novels, which is about, as it states in the title, a vampire hunter by the name of D. D is half vampire himself, a damn peel, and each book is about one of his various adventures slaying vampires. There are two animated films based on this book series. The first one from 1985 is simply entitled Vampire Hunter D, and the second one from 2000 is Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust. I wanted to talk about both of these films in tandem because the storyline of the first I feel is stronger while the visuals suffer, but Bloodlust is gorgeously animated but with a looser, thinner storyline. The first film is based on the first book in the series. A girl named Doris is being preyed upon by the vampire lord of the area and so she hires Dee to help her with this little problem. It's a standard kill the vampire, protect the girl story with all of the classic trappings of how vampires function. Finding a female victim, coming back several nights to continue wooing said victim, etc. What I particularly like about both of these films is that, in them, vampires are really flippin' scary. They are portrayed as monsters that are a scourge on the population in this post-apocalyptic setting. Unfortunately, this film's visuals are really not great. There are anatomy issues aplenty, and in general it just really looks pretty dated. The style hasn't aged well, and it wasn't done very well to begin with. The action sequences are all fairly interesting and creative, but they are animated so clunkily and poorly with scrolling line backgrounds to indicate motion. Also, I really kind of have to wonder why Doris seems to have an aversion to wearing pants, but maybe that's just me. Bloodlust is based on the third book in the series and centers around Dee's mission to rescue a girl named Charlotte who has been kidnapped by a different vampire lord. The plotline is really a bit weaker here, and especially since it has so very large a cast that you are never properly introduced to, the story writing suffers a bit here. But where this one absolutely shines is in the visuals department. The artwork in Bloodlust is spectacular, and it's just as spooky and macabre as it should be. There is tons of really great imagery and creepy visuals, and everything is rendered absolutely beautifully. The action sequences are engaging and well animated, and the entire thing just oozes style. While it might be a bit of a case of style over substance, this film looks amazing. I could go on forever about how much I love the classic vampire feel to this movie. On the whole, I do prefer Bloodlust out of the two. Despite its plot failings, it sticks well with what it's good at, and that is telling a very good-looking story about vampires and monsters. And when it comes to vampires, style is pretty darn important. And although I do really love the story of the first movie, having read the books, I also know that there's a lot of changes made to the storyline that didn't really impress me. Of course, there were changes made between the books and Bloodlust as well, but those ones were a little less problematic to me. Honestly, you probably don't want to get to know the cast much better than you do. Both of these movies have a lot of very distinctly Asian kinds of monsters in them, so conceptually they are incredibly engaging. Japan has some of the weirdest, creepiest monsters you will ever come across, and these movies are a great example. 
Dee doesn't just fight vampires, he also fights many other creatures that the vampires have enlisted, so there's lots of great action. Now, I do need to mention that these are, of course, films for mature audiences. There is a lot of surprisingly gruesome content in both, and there is also a lot of nudity. But these are definitely not for kids at all. Vampire Hunter D. Bloodlust is one of my favorite vampire films of all time, and, in my opinion, is 100 times more romantic than Twilight could ever be, and looks better doing it, too. Myself, I am Count Magnus Lee, at your service. And since you seemed fit to take it upon yourself to trespass into my domain, I must ask for favor. Well, that's it for my little review of the Vampire Hunter D movies. If you are sick of broody modern vampires like I am, then I highly recommend these. Hope you'll enjoy the rest of the horror-themed month of October. I've got some really great titles picked out. I put up new videos every Wednesday, so do subscribe for more. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye!